Welcome to your Western Australia travel guide. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you 30 things you can do on a trip from Perth all the way down to Esperance. I recently did a Southwest Western Australia road trip. It was absolutely phenomenal. As someone that has traveled the world and been to some glorious places, this place blew my mind. If you're new around here, hi, my name is Dane. I moved to Australia last year on a working holiday visa. I post videos all about travel, give you guys advice, tips, tell you what not to do. I don't think you've ever seen me with my hair like this. My hair is driving me crazy today. So just, just ignore this. There'll be lots of B-roll so you won't even see me much. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and giving this video a thumbs up if you enjoy this content. If you've ever considered wanting to move to Australia, you can download my free Moving to Australia travel guide and hopefully that will clear up any queries, worries that you may have. You may have already caught my Western Australia travel vlogs. There was about four videos in this series and then last week I revealed how much this trip cost me. I wanted to give you guys as much information as possible. So I actually recorded every single dollar I spent and every place that I went so I could share it with you to make your trip less stressful. If you want a more detailed breakdown of everything I talk about in this video, I have actually posted a blog just to give you um, a recommended itinerary. Now for this trip, I would recommend 10 days minimum, 14 days if you've got time. I felt like that was perfect for me or if you want to take things a bit slower, 21 days. Now, many people, they come to Australia, they hit up the East Coast, you get on your Greyhound Pass, forget that, scrap that, get in the bin. You need to jump on a flight to Western Australia, head to Perth and drive down to Esperance because it was just the creme de la creme of Australia and I can't wait to go back. So if anyone wants to uh, take me on a trip there, I won't say no. The best mode of transport to travel Australia is of course, a camper van. It gives you the ultimate flexibility. You can camp by the beach, you can camp in the rainforest, you can camp wherever. Now I've done road trips in Australia before but I found Western Australia there were so many free campsites and some of them were bloody beautiful. I won't touch on Perth too much in this video but if you are starting from Perth I would recommend spending at least one full day in Rottnest Island. It was a beautiful place. I saw so many quarkers and the beaches there were stunning. Then once you've left Perth, make sure you stop in Fremantle. This is something that we did and I was really impressed by all the food markets in Fremantle. It had a really good vibe there. So maybe spend a couple of hours there before heading down to your first spot on the Southwest road trip, which is Bunbury. I found the Southwest of Australia full of these cute, quaint little towns. And I just loved the peaceful laid back vibe Australia is very laid back in general, but this part of the country is even more laid back. I'm talking cute little coffee shops, cute little jetties. So jetties, I'm aware my accent has changed so much since being here. So I'd recommend stopping in Bunbury, even if you just stroll down the beach or go get a coffee there. It was a cute little place. There's also a nice little free park up that you can stay the night. There's showers there, you wake up, you can see the ocean. It's amazing. Number four is Bustleton. Bustleton was truly my favorite place. We spent in total three or four days out of this whole 14 day trip in Bustleton just because I loved it. So there's a few things that you can do in Bustleton. Firstly, just relax on the beach. This will be your first sight of these sort of quiet white sand beaches with crystal blue waters, beautiful. Then you can take a nice 1.8 kilometer walk down Bustleton Jetty, takes about 25, 30 minutes. And then if you are feeling up for it, you can either walk back or they do have a train that goes back to the start of the jetty if you're feeling a bit lazy. There is a netted zone with another jetty that you can just sit there and watch the most beautiful sunset. Me and my friend really took some time and we were like jumping in, practicing our dives. Not that I can dive, but you know what I mean? It's a nice little place. If your budget allows, I would highly recommend going to stay with Hayscape on the Witcher Ridge wine region. It was truly magical. We stayed in this really cute, tiny house that had kangaroos everywhere. Very remote, it was very beautiful. It's about 15, 20 minute drive outside Bustleton, but it was probably one of my favorite experiences. If you're into markets as well, Bustleton is your vibe. I didn't take much footage of this, but they did have an outdoor market, which was really nice. It was at the weekend when we were there. So we had a little stroll around there. Personally, I freaking love a market. And then they also had an indoor market slash food court, which was great. They had so many food options. Just fix my hair. 
not used to just like hair being down and that. Once you leave Bustleton, you're gonna wanna head to the Dunsborough area and check out the most stunning beach. I'm probably gonna say that a lot in this video. So this beach is called Meal Up Beach. Shout out to my uncle for recommended this beach. My friend did get stung by a jellyfish, but don't let that put you off. Make sure you have a dip in the water. The water felt so clear and clean that it was almost like you could drink it. Obviously, I would not recommend you drink the seawater. That would be completely silly. If you're looking for a beautiful place to have a nice picnic, a nice afternoon, go to Meal Up Beach. It was so stunning. Further up from Meal Up Beach, you have Cape Naturalist. There's a beautiful walk and a lighthouse there so you can get to some really remote beaches. If you're into hiking and walking, you could probably spend a few days in this area to do all the different hikes. Personally, we just spent about $5 going to see the lighthouse and then we did, I think it was an hour return walk and we saw a beautiful beach. So the cool thing about Western Australia is you'll go to beaches and there'll be no one else there. Like you literally have this stunning beach in front of you and you have it to yourself. Like, who doesn't want that? There's also a really nice sunset spot not far from here called Sugarloaf Rock. Unfortunately, for some reason, there was a mad amount of bees like flying into our van when we parked up here. So we didn't spend a lot of time here, but there was this really cool rock called Sugarloaf Rock. I can imagine it would be a really cool place to see sunset. Then you're gonna wanna stay the night in Yalingarp. Now Yalingarp is a beautiful, region in Western Australia. I definitely didn't spend enough time here, but it's home to one of my favorite things on this trip called Indijup Natural Spa. I just can't even put into words how stunning this place was. So it was a rock formation and the waves from the ocean hit the back of the rocks and then it causes like this natural spa effect and you get all these like champagne bubbles down below. I went there in the morning. It wasn't too busy. We pretty much had the place to ourselves. There was maybe a few people around, but it was one of my favorite spots and me and my friend always talk about how amazing that morning was. Next up, a trip to Western Australia. It wouldn't be a trip to Western Australia without going to the Margaret River region. Now, I don't drink wine. I'm nearly a thousand days sober, woo! But I really enjoyed this area because I felt like it was so beautiful. There's over 200 vineyards in this area. We personally went to Mentelli Vineyard. It was about $10. My friend got to try a few different wines and then you don't actually pay for the wine tasting if you buy a bottle. So definitely spend a night or two in the Margaret River region. The little town is very cute as well. There's loads of cool places to eat and it just had a really nice laid back atmosphere, which is what you want when you're road tripping and going on holiday. If you're into coffee and cute cafes, make sure you hit up Prevelli, which is not too far from the Margaret River region. That was a mouthful. So there is a beautiful cafe called White Elephant Cafe and it's the perfect place to have a morning coffee. Once you've left the Margaret River region, you're gonna wanna head to Hamlin Bay. Now this was probably one of my favorite mornings as well, but we basically spent like an hour just like walking along the beach and there is so many stingrays in the ocean. I'm not brave enough to go swim. There was like three or four when we went, but it was just so cool to see these beautiful creatures in their natural habitat. After Hamlin Bay, you can drive down to the Augusta area. And this part of Western Australia, there is so many caves that can be explored. I think there's about seven or eight that you can actually go in. You have to go on a guided tour because it's probably not safe to go wandering in a cave on your own. So out of all the caves to choose from, we decided to go to Jewel Cave because we heard it was the biggest and we heard it was the most beautiful and it did not disappoint. After you've been to one of the caves, definitely stop at some point, maybe even a few times in Hillagia National Park. We got out here and we were just, our minds were blown at how beautiful this forest was. Every 30 minutes, you're gonna be wanting to get out your van or your rental car just to look around because it's just so beautiful. Now, if you're coming to this area or if you've done this trip before, you probably might think, well, you've missed this out, you've missed this out, you've missed this out. There is so many things that I couldn't cover in this video. These are just some of the things that I've done and I would recommend to you guys. If you know any more, leave them down in the comments below so people watching this video, they might find other recommendations that I haven't covered. There is a lot of driving on this trip. I think in total, if you were to do the same route that we did going from Perth to Esperance, it would take 15 hours to stop at all these places. So obviously you break it up over at least a 10 day, 14 day, three week period. We spent the night at Wildpool because there was a few activities that we wanted to do nearby, such as the Valley of the Giants treetop walk. This was a very nice activity. It was very chill, very inexpensive, and it's a great morning activity. We probably spent like an hour there, grabbed a coffee, walked around with the tingle trees, and it was just really lovely. During the drive to Albany, there are many places that you can stop, including Elephant Rock 
and green pool. Now we did stop there, as you can see from my footage. It looked a little rainy, it looked a little moody, so I would love to go back there again, but I would probably spend a whole morning, if not a whole afternoon, at one of these beaches because the beaches were beautiful, the water was so crystal blue, and I can imagine on a sunny day that this beach is just glowing. Next up is Denmark. Now, I didn't feel like Denmark was a substantial stop, but it's definitely a place you can stop for food. We stopped at Boston Pizza Brewery, something like that. I'll put the name down below because I can't actually remember it. We had some amazing wood fire pizzas here, so it's definitely worth stopping in Denmark. I also kind of think it's funny that there's a place in Australia called Denmark, like the country. So next up is Albany. Now there is so much to do around the Albany area, so I'll go for a few things. So there is a national park there, which is home to probably one of my favorite places in Albany called The Gap. It's this beautiful viewing platform where you can look down below if you're brave enough, because it actually looks kind of scary when you look down there. And there's also the bridge as well. It's really accessible. You can park there, walk directly there. And then if you're here around sunset in this area, go to the wind farm. You've got wind turbines, you've got the beach, you've got this beautiful green area. So it's a really cool place to go for sunset. If you're into hiking, go to the Stirling Range National Park. This is where we did the Bluff Knoll hike. It was, it was kind of tough, I'm not gonna lie to you. I didn't even vlog this experience because it was kind of tough. I think it's a grade four hike. It probably took me just shy of three hours to do this hike in total. It's not a long hike but there's a lot of steps, so it does take you a bit longer, but still, it's definitely worth going. Even if you don't do the hike, maybe there's some shorter walks in the national park that you can do. So after Albany, the next big spot is the creme de la creme, it's Esperance. But again, there are a few places you can stop on the way down to a beautiful Esperance, including yummy, licious, Candy Shack in Ravensthorpe. Now, we just happened to drive and stay in Ravensthorpe two nights. We stayed at a free campsite, but there is not much going on. It's a really small town. I think it's an old mining town, but it's home to this glorious little candy shop called Yummylicious. So if you happen to be driving through Ravensorp, the lady in there is lovely. Definitely go and say hello and buy some sweets for your journey. We have sadly come to the end of the road trip, but that's okay because this area is stunning. So Esperance is like the end of the road trip before you drive back to Perth. Now there's a few things, there's actually quite a lot of things to do around Esperance, but they mainly revolve around insanely stunning beaches. So the first thing you're gonna do in Esperance is the Great Ocean Drive. There are some really cool beaches here. My personal favorite was Blue Haven, then Observatory Point up at the Mont screen here. And how could I forget Twilight Beach? The water here was just amazing. We went on the back end of summer and it was still hot enough that we could lay out on the beach, go swimming, so yeah, it was really cool. And then you can end the circuit by going to a pink lake that used to be pink, but it's kind of not pink anymore, but maybe you want to still go and see it. Then you can spend your final day of the trip or do this in whatever order you want at Cape Le Grand National Park. This is about 45 minute drive from Esperance. You can camp there if you manage to be lucky enough to reserve a spot in one of the campsites around this national park. I've heard it gets booked up a few months in advance. This national park is home to one of the best areas in probably Australia. So there was a beach called Lucky Bay. If you're lucky, you'll see some kangaroos jumping around here. Lucky Bay was voted the number one beach in the world by many media outlets. So it's quite a famous beach, it's got a name to it, and I can see why it's so beautiful. There are other stunning beaches in the area. I personally liked Whistler's Cove and Hellfire Bay. They were really beautiful as well. I would personally suggest at least, at least three or four nights to fully enjoy Esperance, go and enjoy all the beautiful beaches, do some hiking in the national park, because there is so much to do. This part of Western Australia is not shy of activities, and I already can't wait to go back. How you're gonna end your trip is driving back to Perth if you follow a similar itinerary to the one that I'm giving you. And there is a stop that unfortunately we didn't get to do because we drove a different route, but there was a place called Wave Rock in Hayden. So that pretty much breaks up the drive back to Perth. I believe it's about eight hours. I am definitely gonna do this road trip again because it was phenomenal. Like you guys know me, I'm pretty honest. If I don't like something, I'm gonna tell you. This hands down one of the best trips I've ever done. And it has to be done in a camper van. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. I really appreciate the support. If you enjoyed it, please consider giving me a thumbs up or giving this video a thumbs up. And if you've ever wanted to go to Australia, make sure you hit subscribe because I'm still in Australia for a good year or so. So I'm gonna be sharing all the top things to do, all the best road trips, cities to visit, 
and you're not going to want to miss those. So until next time, thanks so much for watching, guys. Take care and peace out.